Thank you for watching my video. My name is Casey and today we're going to be installing a FortiGate firewall and setting it up for first use. In order to get started, we need to take a look at my current network. As you can see, I get my internet from an ISP. This is a residential ISP, not a commercial uh, connection. It then comes into my modem, which will go out to my firewall, which will then hit my switch, and finally into my internal LAN. My goal today is to get my internal computers connected to the internet. In order to do that, we need to go ahead and connect to our firewall. The management IP for our firewall is going to be 192.168.1.99. The username is admin and there is no password. Before we get started, there are a couple of things that we need to change. So we're going to come over here to system administrators. We want to change our administrator password just by clicking on the change password there and setting it to something that is not empty. We'll then need to re-log in. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and change our default time. And the reason we want to do this is because if we have to go through the logs to try to find some error, it's really helpful for if the time actually matches the time that we expect. You might also want to go ahead and change your default HTTP and PS ports so that they are not the default as this is standard security practice. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and take a look at our interfaces. I'm using a FortiGate 60E, which means that I have seven ports, the DMZ, and two WAN ports. If you're using a FortiGate 40 or something else, then you will have different ports. In this case, ports one through seven are acting as a hardware switch. And then we have my disabled DMZ, WAN, and WAN 2. So I want to go ahead and double click on my WAN. It's already set for the WAN role. Now for my specific setup, because I get my internet from a residential modem, that means I'm going to get a DHCP address from that modem. Even though this is a WAN port, it is going to be pulling that IP address from the modem. Now I could also manually set it, but it will still be on the, uh, 10.0.0.0 slash 24 network. In this case, it's going to pull 10.0.0.24 because I already logged into the modem and I set a DHCP reservation. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on DHCP and then we're going to enable the port. Click on OK. And let's see, DHCP enabled. There we go. Now we're going to give this a few seconds and then refresh and we should see an IP address. If you manually set the IP address, this will automatically show up immediately. And so there you can see I have 10.0.0.24. You'll notice that I still do not have any internet access down here. So if I try to go to a website such as Google, nothing happens. And that is because we need to set up a policy to allow our traffic outside of our network. When the FortiGate first comes, sometimes when you set up the WAN port, it will automatically create a rule. Sometimes it won't. Uh, in this case, it did not. So basically what's happening is all traffic coming in and out of your firewall is being blocked. And we're going to see this because we will have one rule set up that is um, already there by default. So if we come into our policy and objects and then our policies, and then we will see we have one rule, and implicit deny. That means everything is going to get denied. So this will always be there. You cannot get rid of this rule, and it will always be the last rule in your table. Um, when you set up firewall rules, then they are, uh, the firewall will process them in the order in which they apply. So if it reaches the very last one, which will be this deny, traffic will uh, be dropped. So in this case, we want to go ahead and we want to allow traffic to hit our modem. 
So in order to do that, we want to create a new policy. We want to give it a name. I like to give the name for what the policy is actually going to be doing. So I'm going to call this LAN to WAN. Our incoming interface, this is where our traffic is coming from. In this case, it is coming from our internal switch. You'll see here that we have internals 1 through 7. And then the outgoing interface is going to be our WAN. So our traffic is leaving our, in, our computer, hitting our firewall on the LAN, and then it is going outside of the WAN to the internet. Our source, we're going to let all, that means every computer that tries to access our LAN, and then our destination will also be all. Uh, schedule will leave us always, and then for our service, we will also hit all. We're going to leave NAT enabled. We want to allow um, tra or log traffic, and then our policy is enabled. We will now hit OK. And we should see here, I get internet here in just a few seconds. So we'll wait for that to happen. Uh, let me make sure I do not have a static IP. It doesn't look like it. So um, I now have internet. So if I go to google.com, you can see it now pulls up. Uh, let's try some other sites, msn, um, mba.com. So as you can see, I now have internet access on my computers. And the IP address that it is pulling from, if we come back to our interfaces and we check out our internal, we can see here that we have a DHCP range of 1.10 to 2.10. And if we check that, and our IP address is 1.11. Now that we have access to the internet, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. In our next video, we're going to actually show you how to get a connection into your firewall. So if you want to access, say, a camera system or um, a media server, then you can be able to do that through your phone or through a web interface uh, or some type of website. And you will be, allow, uh, be able to allow that traffic into your network and be able to get access to your internal resources. For now, thank you for watching. Please leave me a comment below and hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you.